receptions, what was it like taking part in it? Oh, well, it was a great privilege to take part in a, a gathering of the Universal Church. You know, uh, bishops and laity from all different parts of the world, different cultures, different uh, difficulties being faced, as, as well as many joys. Um, so that, it, was, it was a great experience from that point of view. Um, I think that it was, as I said, it was a very much a, a listening exercise. Um, the Holy Father specifically at the beginning asked everyone to be honest and open um, and, uh, and, you know, to speak, speak their, their, uh, their ideas and their thoughts um, with humility, you know, and, and, and just listening to each other. And we think that was carried out. Obviously, there were different um, approaches, different, different um, uh, attitudes to some of these more difficult issues. But it's very much, it's, it's an ongoing process too. You know, that synod uh, will now be the, what came out of this synod will be the working um, papers or working document for the next one in a year's time. So there's a, a, year's, a year in which these, uh, some of these difficult issues can be studied further and discussed, discussed more in the different conferences around the world. I think on the question of listening, we were very conscious of the fact that a number of cardinals had written even books and certain, certainly papers in anticipation of the Senate stating certain positions, and that's good, that's healthy. Uh, but so clearly people had strong ideas, and I think anyone who would come to the Senate would, would have to have strong ideas, mm. uh, hopefully, mm. uh, and they would be different ideas. And it was very, very interesting for me personally to sit there and just watch this play out as people really, well, first of all, we started each session with prayer, a good 20 minutes of prayer and mm. together, and then people saying their piece quite openly, but uh, listening to each other. I think there's a real sense of listening. And it struck me that this is how the church's teachings have always developed over time. We talk about tradition. Well, that tradition is really people coming together, listening to each other, praying together, and trying to make sense of what Jesus wants us to do in the world today. This discussion on, on family life was put in the context of evangelization, but, but can you explain the connection between those things? Basically the church is love, expressing God's love through love of neighbour. And that is best experienced through family, that's where you learn to love, you learn to say please, thank you, be unselfish, not be rude and so forth. Your basic uh, love, uh, ability to love is formed through family. That love comes from the love of the couple. It's spread out through the family, through the children. And then it should be, love is always expanding. So love should expand to the neighbors, to the workplace. And that basically is evangelization. That's sharing the gospel by witness, by example, by being part of people's lives. That was very much a point at the Synod. They mm. talked, the bishops too, talked a lot about accompanying people, being with them on their journey. And uh, that's a, I think a significant shift in church language, which uh, is important. I think it comes back to um, families uh, are out there in the in the workplace, you know, they're um, in the neighbourhood, and so their witness is a great opportunity to spread to spread the uh, the the good news, you know, of, of Jesus, uh, not through preaching or imposing, just by the witness of, of their lifestyle. So it's evangelization through the family. You know, the family not just as a, a welfare recipient needing support and help all the time, but the family actually being out there as a great resource in, in spreading the gospel. So you were at the Synod as, as, as special guests and, and didn't have voting rights. Um, and it was only the ordained clergy, the cardinals, bishops, priests who could vote. But was that frustrating at all? And do you think lay people should have more power in, in determining, um, uh, you know, whatever the final statement of these meetings are? Well, it was, a, it was a meeting of bishops, so we have no problem with that. You know, it was specific a meeting of their coming together. Um, and there was lay input. Um, every session began with a, a testimony or input from, from one of the, the couples or one of the laity there. Um, in terms of whether there should be more lay participation, uh, we think so, yes. Um, in fact, uh, Pope Benedict, you know, called for a change of mindset, you know, co-responsibility of the laity, not just collaborators. And I think we're a long way from that. But I think we need to work together as a church, especially when it comes to expressing things in relatable language. You know, we have great truths there in the church, but often they're not heard or they're not, not expressed in a way that the average layperson, you know, could really hear or understand. Uh, so we think by working to, more closely together with laity uh, that we can find better ways forward. 
I have little, I can't add to that. I think it's, <laughs> it's a masterly <laughs> summary. Uh, I mean, basically, uh, people, the problem with clericalism is uh, largely in the laity. It's also in the clerics, but it's very much in the laity mm. as well. Mm. Uh, laity can be as clerical as anybody else. Mm. Uh, so all t together we need to work against that because mm. that makes a fundamental problem in coming together as a church. Mm. We don't have any problem with the bishops making the final decision. Uh, it, it just happens that that's the way the church is. The church has an apostolic line from St. Peter through the bishops down through the clergy and that's the way it's structured. Uh, for better or for worse. But the laity have a particular absolute mm. responsibility and role. We're baptised, we're confirmed, we have, uh, we have the sacrament of matrimony. It gives us uh, the, the right and the duty and the responsibility to speak up and speak clearly in, uh, in, um, with sensitivity and uh, with humility, as we all should have, as the bishops have and should have. So we, we don't see any problem in having our rightful place. And we, if asked to speak at the Synod, we speak our mind and we will listen to there. Can you explain um, where, where to from here with the Synod process? And what are your hopes um, for the outcome of the Synod? That silence. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of hopes. So well, it's many. obviously an ongoing process, as we said before. You know, we've got... Um, uh, and in the, in the final analysis, it will rest with the Holy Father, you know, and, and what comes from it. Um, our hope that certainly that uh, uh, marriage and, and the beauty that's involved with marriage and family life, you know, will, will be um, reclaimed, if you like, you know, and, and uh, that people realise that it's, it's within marriage, you know, that so much you, you learn who you are as a person um, with all the, the, the goodness and the frailties within that. And that, that uh, hopefully it'll be a, uh, a very strong affirmation of marriage and family life as, as the, the basic cell of society, if you like. And the, the healthier the family, you know, the healthier our society. And uh, we, so I guess that would be one of our hopes. Um, and, uh, that, and there'll be new, new, find new ways of being a, a compassionate, open church, you know, that, that uh, people will hear that. Um, not a church of rules, but a church of love, you know, and, 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 uh, and outreach. Mm. Yeah, I'd just add to that, uh, mm. there are a number of hopes. One of them would be relatable language. We need clear language. Uh, mm. You read what the church says about uh, the sexuality of the sacrament of matrimony, and it's all there. It's, all that church teaching is there, but it's written in such language that you really can't understand. The average person would have, wouldn't have a clue, wouldn't even realise they're talking about sex, frankly. Um, so, no, I maybe think I'm too strong on that, but no, no, we have to improve our language and lay people can help with that. The other thing is brokenness. We have to start from the position that uh, we're talking about relationships. The church is relationship, relationship with God, lived out through our relationship with each other. We all break that relationship to a greater or less extent. Every day we're taking each other for granted, we're hurting each other, we're doing little things which are not up to scratch. Uh, sometimes very bad things and so we're all we should just recognize that we start from a point of brokenness once we start from that point then we'll, we'll be less judgmental and much more open to, uh, mm. to and find better ways of expressing this beautiful teaching that we we have mm. 